Thank you. Thank you. Uh, call up Meryl Davidson. Mr Chair, thank you very much. Um, uh, it's my honour to stand and take a call. In this, the committee stages of the Point England Development Enabling Bill. Uh, at the moment, Mr Chair, we're looking at part one, clauses three to five, uh, and I really am just going to, at this point, focus on one particular aspect um, of the Green Party position. Uh, we are abstaining on this legislation. While we absolutely support Ngāti Pāwa's visions and uh, desires for their land and the rightful return of it. We also know that this bill is absolutely flawed um, and that there are deep concerns, valid concerns that we have heard. Uh, so I wanted to pick up particularly on part one, I think it's uh, down to, uh, sorry, part one, I think it's clause four, apologies, which goes through the various participants of the bill, and it is, um, my apologies, it is the Crown. So I wanted to pick up on uh, part one clause for that this bill uh, is binding on the Crown. Now one of the considerations that the Green Party has had to think carefully about is how this relates to the treaty settlement of Ngāti Pāwa. Um, and the Crown as a character specifically mentioned in part one uh, was something that the Green Party has had to discuss. Now, while this bill is not specifically Te Tiriti legislation itself, uh, the binding part of the Crown enables the treaty settlement of Ngāti Pāwa to happen, um, which in turn enables the visions for housing development from Ngāti Pāwa to happen. Now, keeping still on the part one, clause four of the binding on the Crown, part of our concern with this bill is that it is absolutely allowing the Minister Nick Smith um, to uh, catch up and try and paper over the lack of building of affordable housing that has been missing for far too long. So we recognise that, but what we also recognise is Ngāti Pāwa's wish to be able to develop housing on their own land. And for, for the Green Party, I acknowledge that the original uh, what this bill is trying to, or gives an opportunity to do, is to rectify the original injustice, which is the fact that this was always Ngāti Pāwa land in the first place. And so um, it is binding on the Crown. While the legislation does not specifically mention Te Tiriti or Waitangi, we understand uh, that a uh, letter from Chris Finneson to the Ngāti Pāwa Iwi Trust dated 13 October 2016 makes it very clear that there is an understanding that this land will be used as part of the Te Tiriti settlement. And while we uh, don't have and while, we, while the Green Party has maintained that treaty settlements themselves are not a form of justice, what we're wanting to uphold is Ngāti Pāwa's visions uh, to develop housing on their land, and the, the part that binds the Crown is a good faith agreement and an understanding also shown by that letter from Minister Chris Finlayson on 13 October 2016, uh, that that understanding is that's what this land will be used for. And in particular, the, I think, nearly 12 hectares um, put aside in particular for housing development. So uh, I wanted to firstly, as my first call, address this particular point that holds some credence for the Green Party, who have always uh, uh, preferred to support Te Tiriti settlements, but what we understand is this is also a roundabout way uh, that allows uh, the Minister Nick Smith on the Minister's agenda to try and catch up with the lack of housing that has been provided, uh, particularly for Auckland. And so we're in this position of abstaining um, through wanting to support Ngāti Pāwa, through recognising that this uh, legislation, while not strictly te tiriti legislation, upholds and binds the Crown in respect to uh, keeping aside that part of the development for Ngāti Pawa housing legislation. Thank you, Mr Chair. Mr Speaker. Mr Chair, thank you very much for this opportunity 